Has he gone? Has he gone? Finally. <laughs> Tim. Tim, 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 Tim. Long story short, I'm about to go live. Put in the thing, and I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go live. I'm just going to have a wee, wee chat. I'm going to talk about this new thing I'm going to do called Rapost. And, um, Skajow! Um, Tim Carney. Love that boy. Uh, absolute, ta absolute tabletop? Um, Abtab Tanoon exploded into my feed and I was like, no, I can't compete with his ratings. He's just got a handsome face that makes me just want to... Just kidding. Um, no, no, not just kidding. He is a very handsome man. Um, uh, by the day as well, like every day, he just gets more rugged and sensational. So, all my love. Uh, but no, just kidding. Uh, but yeah, I wanted to go live because I had a cool thing to do today. Uh, and um, I don't know about uh, you guys uh, on the community that have um, uh, a YouTube channel. Um, but uh, for those that do, you might know that the, uh, the inbox, uh, like... I don't, I seem to not get alerts when I get messaged. Uh, probably because I should check my email more, I guess. But um, I get like a few messages every now and then. I'm not like inundated, but every now and then someone uh, messages with a, uh, with a question uh, for me. Um, so I thought, oh, I've got a really cool idea. Why don't I like go live? And address the question, answer it as best as I can. And then obviously, I have you guys, wonderful community, with your own answers that will likely counter my, you know, examples that I give. Or whatever. So, um, I'm going to go uh, go ahead and, and read the question. This is a question from Warrior 57 And for those of you watching... Um, basically, if you send me a question on either Performance Check... Uh, on Facebook, probably the best one, considering it took me this long to see the uh, the question in YouTube. Performance check on Facebook. Go and like it and send me a message, uh, or you can inbox me on YouTube, um, and I will devote uh, a video to answering your questions. So this is for J Warrior Fifty Seven, and I hope it's useful. So he asks, or he says. Hi, I was wondering if I could ask you for some advice. I'm currently about to start a new campaign with players who are somewhat experienced. They created really cool characters that fit really well into the world that I have created. I've been having a hard time coming up with an interesting overarching story for the campaign. The main issue I am having a hard time thinking of something interesting for my players uh, that makes sense in the world. If it is possible, uh, I could explain the exact situation, but you are obviously a busy person, not that busy. <laughs> uh, I would love any advice you could give. Um, uh, and he goes on to talk about some other stuff that I've done on my channel, but very, very nice. Uh, very, very nice message. So thank you very much, Warrior 57 and I will do my best. So what you, you're basically asking is, is you're having a hard time coming up with an interesting overarching story. Well... Um, the first thing that I would suggest, uh, in fact, I will address that in a second. I'm just going to see some people have joined me live, so and then I will begin the question. Uh, the answer. <laughs> I won't ask him another question back. Um, I can see uh, Tordor has arrived, and it says, is this the most selfie video broadcaster ever, or what? It is the most selfie video. That's, uh, that's an in-joke now, isn't it? The selfie video. Um... Yes, it is. I guess. I think. Tyler Hurst has joined. Uh, Sam DeMacurio has joined. Nate. Oh, Nate Vanderzy. The man himself. Hi, man. How's it going? Um, Tyler Hurst uh, has responded. So what I'm going to do is, whilst people are watching this and responding, I will begin what I think is like a good way to do this. So we're asking for uh, basically coming up with an interesting overarching story. Well, you say interesting, but the thing is, uh, different people find different things interesting at the end of the day. Uh, and I think it is a fool's errand to set out trying to create something uh, like specifically to make it interesting for a certain group of people. 
Now, what I think is a really good thing to do is to obviously have, like, potentially, like, a session, a session zero. Or just sit down with your players and generally, like, come to understand what they want from a campaign. Like, the kind of... Not necessarily... You don't ask them about the story because the whole point is that they need to discover the story. But you ask them the kind of mood, tone, um, setting that they kind of find interesting. That's absolutely fine to do, in my opinion. Um, and if they're your mates, then you're probably going to know anyway. And you're probably going to have... You're probably going to share quite a lot of those opinions. Um it's about you, but a whole bunch of my friends love D&D, they love sci-fi, geekery, all sorts of, like, stuff like that. So, generally speaking, if I pitch an idea to them, then they'll be like, yeah, totally, that sounds awesome. Um, but what I'm saying is, that's fine for the setting and the, the general game. In terms of the story, don't write it for them, write it for you. Um, like... At the end of the day, you can't. You you just you just have to write what you know and what you love, and if it's something that you really love and are really enthusiastic about, that will I promise you uh, come across when you are DMing. Um, I I make sure that anything that I put down for uh, for when I'm DMing, if it doesn't excite me, it doesn't go in the game. Um, if I think to myself, I oh, write, I've come up with this encounter, but doesn't seem, you know, it's not, it's not flipping that switch in my mind. I don't do it, okay? Um, because I, as a DM, uh, rely on a sense of mood and enthusiasm. I basically, <laughs> I try and assault my players with how much, like, I'm enjoying myself. Uh, because that definitely is infectious. <laughs> and I know it sounds a little bit self-indulgent, but trust me, like, if you are enjoying yourself running your material, like, it will come across. It's the same if you're doing, like, stand-up, or if you're, like, performing on stage, or if you're playing an instrument. If you're having, like, a wicked time doing it, I promise you, it will, it definitely will come across. So, think to yourself, Jay Warrior 57 what it is that you really find interesting? What do you find compelling? Okay? Do you find the idea of it being like a revenge story compelling? That your players have been wronged by um, uh, other sort of parties in... Not parties as in adventuring parties, but uh, outside forces in the game. Have they been wronged in some way? Are they going to generate a hit list to go out and take out everyone who ever, uh, ever uh, did you know, bad things to them or whatever, you know, is it going to be a sweeping, uh, adventure? Is it going to be a journey from one side of the realm to the other? Uh, and the journey is, um, sort of dotted with encounters, um, and elements that develop their characters in that way. You know, what do you want? <laughs> yeah. Do you want it to be like Lord of the Rings with that sort of journey? Do you want it to be Star Warsian and there be grand epic themes about fathers and sons, you know? Um, do you want it to be like Goodfellas um, and it's like uh, sort of like uh, black market and gangsters and organised crime in, in whatever setting that you're running, you know? Just think about what is the thing that you love the most and then just direct your attention that way. I promise you it will translate to your players. Um... For those just joining, I'm going to repeat the question. Uh, this is going to go up onto my YouTube uh, channel because this I was it posted at, on my YouTube, so you know. Um, so the question basically is uh, that Jay Warrior says that he would like to come up with an interesting, overarching story for his campaign, but his main issue is he's having a hard time thinking about what his players would find interesting and make sense in his world. Um, <clears throat> and you've probably heard enough of my answer. I can see that I've uh, got uh, some great members in this community already posting in, so let's have a look. Tyler Hurst, my man, Tyler Hurst. Uh, I immediately think that uh, he should take their backstories and individual character personalities and immediately create conflict tied to a central problem or villain. When I say make conflict, I mean take what they believe in and the stories, their backstory support and create tension against that. 
Additionally, if they're experienced, they'll know how to role play well and thus will be tied well to the story. So Tyler's brought up a very good point. Like, um, another way to obviously interest um, your players, and you've said they've come up with these really cool backstories, take those backstories and instantly use them. Uh, he's absolutely right. If you look to video games, uh, video games is a really good example for this. Uh, if you think about the Mass Effect games, I don't know whether you have uh, played the Mass Effect games. If not, check them out. Um, Bioware uh, are great at this. They're the guys that make Mass Effect. I'm really excited about Mass Effect and Andromeda next month as well. I'm losing my mind about that game, but that's another subject altogether. If you look at the Mass Effect games, particularly... Uh, no, no, actually all of them. All of them have this. Um, you have uh, basically a crew. You have people that come along with you in your on your journey. They are essentially... A party of adventurers, uh, but in space. It's the same with the Dragon Age games as well that Bioware also make. Um, and a lot of the missions, a lot of the, uh, the game time that you spend, not only completing the main story, is also uh, about you going to various planets and doing different missions on behalf of and in the name of your party. Um... And a lot of the time that will link into the, uh, the story... Uh, I'm trying to think of an example now from Mass Effect. Um, there is... Oh, what's her name? Liara, the Asari, a blue uh, female alien from a race of uh, solely female aliens, um, is a... Um, she's an archaeologist. And right at the beginning, you run into this, uh, this beacon, this Prothean beacon, that uh, is obviously an archaeological find. And you get it working. Now, that instantly ties into her motivation because she's an archaeologist and has been studying this all her life. So it drags her into the story. Now, obviously, uh, she isn't a playable character, but she is a living, breathing, thinking, reasonable character. There is reason for her to, to come with. It, there is reason for her to um, uh, commit to the common cause of the party because of that one element at the beginning of the game. So... Yeah, totally think, uh, like what Tyler said, check, check out their backstories. Like you said, they, they, they've got really good backstories, then use it. Uh, and also, don't be afraid to use it against them. Uh, Tyler also brings up a good point that you should link it to a villain. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that you have to uh, link it exactly with a, a particular villain's motivation, or, but uh, that can definitely help. Because if the villain is the main source of the conflict in the campaign, then... You know, that's your story. Your story is to is to go against the villain or whatever. Or join them. You know, nothing wrong with an evil campaign. Uh, Carl Swanson has uh, just joined uh, and says, just got in. What are we discussing? That was a little while ago. I don't know whether you heard from that. Uh, I will repeat it once again. I should really have put it at the top of the stream, shouldn't I? Lesson learned. Um, basically, coming up with an interesting overarching story. Uh, that um, uh, that players that your players will find interesting, and my response was, make it interesting for you. Um, and I can see Lloyd has joined. Hey man, my bro Lloyd. Um, if, for those who haven't seen it yet, uh, Lawkeepers chapter for the telling is now up on my channel, uh, and uh, Lloyd was absolutely fantastic in it. Uh, <laughs> and we had a discussion about how there is too much back slapping and knee rubbing in this community and how everyone is too nice to each other. So Lloyd was actually quite average in the game, you know. <laughs> I'm kidding. He was incredible, as they all were. Uh, so go check out uh, Law Keepers Chapter 4, The Telling. I'll be posting it again into the group for those who missed it later on tonight, probably. Uh, and Luke Clinton Gallagher has also joined, saying, ooh, villains, my second favourite topic. It, I'm not really talking about villains, I'm really talking about uh, interesting, overarching stories and how to interest your players with those stories. But villains are obviously a big part of the story, so um, I suppose, yeah, I mean, <laughs> the thing is, I always... Also, Luke, you said that's your second favourite topic. What is your first? Um... I always talk about villains, that's the thing. Uh, I always go on about it. Uh, but they are they are a definite catalyst for great storytelling. So if um, if you know what your friends like, 
if they like Lord of the Rings, if they like Star Wars, if they like Mass Effect, blah, blah, blah. Think about the villains and, and uh, antagonists that you find in those kind of things and sort of work out, you know, what what villains they like. Because villains ge- generally end up being a lot of people's favourite characters. Like Darth Vader. Or if you look to, like... Um, if you look at Game of Thrones, for example, like, you're not sure who's a villain and who's good. Like, there's, well, that's the thing. that In Game of Thrones, people are good and bad, uh, depending on what's happening around them. Um, so, yeah, definitely think about uh, potential uh, characters that your players might like. But make sure, first of all, that you like them. Okay? Uh, because <laughs> I think it's, it's an interesting one. And I think that my my theory about this, in my opinion, extends uh, far wider than just you thinking of the story. And that is, you know, a lot of people have the the uh, the idea that you know, oh, you're the DM, thus you are catering to the players uh, for the players to have fun. That's absolutely right. But remember, at the end of the day, you are also playing the game. You're running the game, but you're also playing it. Um, so you've got to make sure that you are enjoying it as well. Every aspect of it. Um, I really hope that this is helpful, Warrior 57 Because um, I know I've gone on about that one thing for a little while, but like, I really, really want to nail home that that is like, it's a good thing to do. Uh, Carl Swanson says, uh, I think it's important to blend the two methods, Rob's and Tyler's. Find a way to tell a story connected to their backgrounds and backstories that you find interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I don't, I think it's great to obviously utilize backstory. That's what is there for, because at the end of the day, otherwise it's just a paragraph, a couple of paragraphs written on your character sheet or like, um, like, <laughs> you know, things that you've just sent to your DM and it never gets used, you know. Like, I think if it's an incomplete story, then you have every opportunity to then write to the continuing chapters of that backstory. Um, but at the same time, don't rely on just the backstories. Don't be afraid to tell your own story amidst this. Like, like the Mass Effect uh, sort of uh, formula. You have the character's backstories in some way linked to the main problem, but have the main story be its own thing. Don't be afraid to express yourself and express what you want from the game. Um, Because it's... uh, It is a way of expressing yourself. It really is. Um, I I know it may sound like a bit... um, A bit self-indulgent to say, but I I really think creating uh, and, and, and DMing... This kind of thing is its own kind of art form in a way. Like you are essentially, it goes back to to like ancient storytelling, sat around a campfire, uh, the ancient Greeks. You know, like it genuinely does. You are essentially for an evening preparing an evening's uh, or whatever a day's entertainment, and then you are the showman. You are the ringmaster. Um, but you've got to make sure that you're you're in on it too, and enjoying it. Uh, Luke says early on introduce the main villain, but vaguely an agent, a dragon sighting, uh, code words they don't understand yet. Absolutely. Well, I mean, it depends. Like, it, it really depends on on the type of villain you're going for. Like if yeah, if they're a shadowy uh, shadowy agent that's sort of puppeteering and pulling the strings uh, from the shadows, then absolutely. Uh, in my campaign, the Law Keepers, I wanted to put my villain front and centre. I wanted to go, bam, there he is. He's just wiped out someone right in front of you. Like, you have a full display of his uh, uh, mighty power right from the get-go. So you understand who you're up against right from the beginning. Uh, and he's not afraid to just make his presence known and just gun for you instantly. So, you know, chalk and cheese, different ways of doing it. All equally awesome, I will add. Uh, Kyle Swanson. Good point, Rob. There is plenty of room to tell the main story apart from their backstories because that may become limiting to play only to their backstories. Yeah, absolutely. And you've got to remember, like, it is a group effort. So, like... Like, you're you're obviously running the game for uh, a a few people. Um, 
So, and it's absolutely fine to have the spotlight, as a lot of us throughout this community often say. Great to have, like, the spotlight shone on a particular player and character for a while. But, um, you've got to make sure that the other people are going to enjoy it as well. So, if, if it's linked to both the, their stories and also the main story, then that is what makes it interesting for the other players to be involved in. I'm not saying they wouldn't find the other character interesting, but it also gives them stakes in it as well. Um... So yeah, yeah, definitely. Weave that together and it'll be great. Uh, Alan Holloway has joined. Alan, Alan, my goodness me. Classy man. Um, Luke continues to say, To be fair, my players have just witnessed uh, uh, 11 multicoloured dragons attack the capital of their homeland. At least uh, most of their homelands. There you go. The show of force isn't it really it's just like it's just your way of, of as the dm of going this is what you're up against this is the impossible task i'm setting you like dragons bah you know <laughs> tyler hurst always the butt is that because I, I i said you can do that but yeah um so yeah hopefully that's been helpful uh J Warrior fifty seven. I mean, uh, you know, if you have any further questions, feel free to to whack it into the inbox or go over to Facebook uh, and look at performance check. Uh, go like it. Send me a message there. It's all good. Uh, Alessandro has appeared. What's up, man? Hey, man. How's it going? Um, so yeah, uh, I hope uh, that that, like I said, that's been helpful. I'm just gonna. Uh, I mean, does anyone else want to add anything about that in particular? Um, I mean, I can talk about... Because we're talking about, like, thinking up, like, a main story, you know? And that's, like... That's a big undertaking, like, thinking up, like, the... You know, the general sort of... Uh, story. I'll go into how, like, I think of it in a second. Like, um... Because I know I said, like, do something that interests you, but I've not actually like, given you any kind of, like, practical advice of, like, what, how to actually do it. So maybe I'll do that in a bit. I've, seen, I've just got some more comments. Um, Luke says, um, telling your players the world can be awful, have fun storming the castle. Yeah. Show them it's not going to be easy. <laughs> of course it's not going to be easy. And it's, that's, that's the best thing, like, of, like, having your level ones. Like... People, some people think that maybe uh, low level play is boring because you're up against like you know goblins, kobolds, blah blah blah. But what I find, what I really like in a game or in a film or anything like that, I love an underdog story. I love the idea of you being up against like ridiculous odds, but having to overcome them all the way, all, all the same, you know. Uh, and that's something that I really love playing with with low level. Like, you have limited resources and limited skill, but your heart's in the right place. Can you make it through? You know what I mean? Like, it's it's kind of it's kind of inspirational for that for that reason. Um, so yeah, uh, Carl Swanson says exactly. I think of it like the provokers or critical role. Make the main story important to everyone, but cast a spotlight on certain struggles every so often. Yeah, totally. Good, two uh, great examples. Uh, I've seen all of the provokers. I've not seen much of critical role because uh, I will keep my opinions to myself about critical role. I know lots of people like it. I happen to uh, not get it, but that's just me. Um... Yeah, okay, so how... Okay, I'm just going to use this as an example, and I'm not going to do any spoilers, but uh, <laughs> I, will, I will talk about, like, how I came up with a story for the Law Keepers. Uh, so the Law Keepers uh, was an idea I had last summer. It was actually, you know, actually, tell a lie. Tell a lie. It was further away longer than that. I actually included the Law Keepers elements of the law keepers in a campaign i ran before uh the players weren't in any way law keepers or anything like that uh but um there was like mention of them you know and i i started having this idea 
And I kind of liked the meta of it, of anything. Like, I kind of liked that it was slightly a slightly different approach to the idea of D&D. The fact that, like, the storytelling is actually part of the story. Like, it's... Um, I thought it, that would be a great way for me to really focus on the narrative elements of playing D&D, which I knew I had to do because I was going to be running this one online. Uh... When I'm playing um, at home, like with my home group or whatever, when I run my d and there, it is much more sandboxy. Um, whereas with Law Keepers Online, I'm really to the point and I'm, I'm kind of like um, really kind of giving like solid objectives that need to be achieved. Not solutions, but the objectives uh, and seeing how they go about it. I find that really interesting. So think about that as well when you're coming up with your story. Do you want do you want the story to slowly kind of uh come into play as they explore the world or do you want them just to have a little bit of time where they get used to the world, see um the sort of active uh sort of forces in the world and then drop the story on them. It's all different ways that you can do it. Um but yeah, that's, I, I decided that's kind of what I wanted to do. I decided that was kind of the theme. I had an idea for a faction of some type and then decided, no, that faction did exist. Not anymore. So what happens? Again, another meta thing. Like, I, I, thought, I just thought about the game itself. I thought about D&D and I thought, let's be super meta with this and address this game like it's the last game of D&D that ever happens but not obviously the last story that ever happens in D&D that's what I thought of it and I thought well the law keepers are representative of like the defenders of the old ways and now now basically control and fear has taken over the world like monsters have been like sort of segregated and are incredibly rare now like um what would happen if this is the end of the D and D world, the twilight of D and D? You know, uh, and that's basically uh, that really interests me, and I hope that that is communicated through uh, the law keepers. So that's how I that's how I do it. I mean, I can't really explain anything else other than other after that. I think about a beginning, a middle, and an end, which is the obvious stuff that you hear and read everywhere: the beginning, middle, and end. Blah blah blah. Um, so yeah. Um, I hope that's helpful. I'm just going to read a few more comments and I think that might be it. Uh, yeah. I have rambled a bit as well. So, uh, jwarrior57, I hope this hasn't bored you. And and please let me know if this works for you as well. I love... I, I mean, if this advice is rubbish and ridiculous, I would also like to know because I will know... <laughs> I will then learn to reassess uh, me just uh, shouting my mouth like I am at the moment. Uh, I'm just going to have a sip of tea whilst before I read some other comments. Mm. Good stuff. Alessandro has commented, I'm going to have a puff as well. I vape now, yeah. I'm such a hipster. It's boring. Boring to watch that, isn't it? I'll, I won't do that. It takes me too long. Uh, so, Alessandro, I, <laughs> I feel level one stories are good origin stories. If you start at high levels, it should mean that the PCs are already somewhat strong and happen to do to uh, to do something to make them so. Yeah, like um, that. I I like starting like at level three. So like one and two was sort of like you sort of just learning how to survive in the world, really, and becoming not a farmer or not someone who like I don't know is like a basic. NPC role or something. <laughs> um, Luke, I really need to be in your games uh, sometime or have you in one of my games. Dude, yeah, let's do it. Uh, at some point, uh, I will be running another one-shot. Uh, I've been doing them sort of in between each Lawkeeper session, but uh, um, I, uh, I, I've yet to decide what that one-shot's going to be. Like I was saying earlier about like doing something that I find interest, do do something you find interesting first. Um, I need to work out what I find what I will find interesting to do for my next one shot. 
And I will be posting about that shortly. So keep an eye out on the performance check Facebook and on my YouTube and stuff. And it will emerge at some point, I promise. Um, and also, yeah, totally. I'll be in one of your games too, Luke. That sounds awesome. Um, Tyler. All a matter of pacing like a good book. Introducing a villain is so crucial as is revealing information about your character's backstory. It always kills me when players introduce their characters and just lay absolutely everything bare. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's that's actually a very good point. I ran a Star Wars trilogy um, ages ago now uh, with the G20 system. Uh before Saga edition, so a little while back. Uh, and it was set in the Old Republic era. The Knights of the Old Republic, not Old Republic. Knights of the Old Republic. That's what I'm talking about. That's my jam. Uh, Bioware, again, obviously, for some reason. Like, I'm just, like, um, going on about Bioware or stream. But, uh, yeah, like, I um, I told them, like, you guys, like, if you've, if you've played the Knights of the Old Republic games, you will know that you're, the characters within Knights of the Old Republic don't give away all the information until they have they're used to you and they've got to like you or not like you you know then then more information will come out from them like allow your characters backstories to be slow burning allow them to uh, let, basically let make the other players earn your backstory you know like uh, make them you know have to earn trust just like you do in real life like you know I, I don't walk into, like, if I, I don't know, um, I don't walk into a shop and there you go, uh, and someone say, oh, hey there, like, what's your name? Well, I don't know why they'd ask my name in a shop, but, like, okay. Um, someone stops me in the street and goes, hey, what's your name? I go, Rob. My name is Rob. I was born in Cheltenham in 1988. I decided that I loved the game D&D &D when I was 13 years old, and, <laughs> like, I went to school at Balcaris, and I rose into the sixth form and studied drama and blah, blah, blah. <laughs> like, you know, it just doesn't happen, does it? Like, you don't do it. You just go, hey, how's it going, you know? You learn about people, and you should learn about your characters in the same way. Uh, so, yeah. <laughs> Oh dear, that tickled me. Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Um, I've lost where I was in the comments. I'm really sorry. Uh, oh yeah, last one was Tyler. Uh, your character's backstory is precious. Share it like a delicious soda or a piece of cake sparingly. Yes, sparingly. Treat it like you're on a desert island and it's like a it's the last bottle of water. Don't give it up without like genuine like means. Like if someone has a coconut or something. And offers to share some of it with you or like a torch <laughs> a bargaining system has been created um tyler her says dibs on the under dark wars you know it, it might be the under dark wars tyler um i'm talking about my next one shot i have had an idea for the under dark wars but i don't know whether it would be a one shot that's all i'll say um because like well one there were two under dark wars so uh, can i you know, my my first instinct would be, okay, this is set in the second under that was because it was bigger. But then where's the love for the first under dark war, which I also really like the idea of. I've not really gone into too much detail. Like I have all of the under dark wars pl basically plotted as to what happened. And it's interesting to try and think, well, where would the game actually happen? And, and, and how much would the game influence what actually happened in the war? Because I know there are certain things that have to have happened to reflect on the current uh, predicament the Nine Kingdoms is in now. Uh, the Underdark War had some massive implications for what happened um, was what is happening now, because it took place in the past. Um, so yeah, it's an interesting one. I'm looking forward to the Underdark Wars whenever I get round to it. But yeah, man. Okay, Tyler, you can totally have a bit of dibs. You can have a bit of dibs on the Underdark Wars. But I can't promise anything until I've posted it. So... But I do like, I really like you as a player, Tyler. I really like you as a player. <laughs> player! I like you in general. It's fine. This is awkward. I like you, Tyler, okay? Just... <laughs> um, Kyle Stanton. Hola. Hola, mi amigo. Uh, Kyle Swanson says, Rob, are you sponsored by Bioware? I wish I was sponsored by Bioware. I'd be like, Bioware. Bioware, why don't you allow me to make a Law Keepers video game? That'd be awesome. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, that'd be great. 
Although I'd see myself enjoying using a sort of Skyrim engine more, if we're gonna go for the video game. Although I suppose mm, Skyrim's less about story, more about exploration. It depends, but yeah, I'm totally, I wish I was sponsored by Bioware, that'd be amazing. Um, Luke says, Scanlan from Critical Role, for example, we know very little about his past. I don't know who that is. But fair play. Uh, dibs on under Dark Wars trilogy. <laughs> uh, and he says, oh, thanks, Rob. Likewise, Red. Cool, man. So after uh, addressing that question and establishing that me and Tyler do, in fact, have a friendship, um, I think that's about it. So, uh, Jay Warrior, thank you ever so much. And if you would like a, um, <laughs> I guess, an entire stream devoted to you, then go on to Facebook Make sure you like Performance Check and send me a message uh, there, or you can send it into my YouTube inbox, but it may take me a little longer to find it because I forget that YouTube has an inbox function. Um, and I will, I promise you, I will dedicate a repost, repost, to you. So thank you for watching, and I hope that all of your performances are up to standard.